Um, and um, today I'll be talking about once you build like complicated products, complicated data products, uh, or it could be anything else. And and then how do you communicate that entire thing to to your users? So how do you build their documentation as a product all around? Okay, um, a brief about Gojek. Um, so Gojek is a uh, is an online platform for ride hailing. In 2010, we started as a phone based service to so anyone can hail ride. But in last over like couple of years, we have evolved as a like you know a, a full platform which hosts kind of more than 18 products, starting from the ride hailing to financial products to even you know food delivery and different different markets. Um, so the business has grown and the complexity of the of the technology has grown uh, like very very rapidly uh, a little bit about me um, i started my career as a designer turned into a developer and then was in some time as a data journalist then went into data visualization and these days i'm doing like a lot of data engineering um, so okay um, agenda so today we'll talk mostly about i'll give you a little landscape around data engineering at gojek uh, what we do, what kind of products we build. Um, then I'll talk about Chronicle, which is actually one product which we, which is our technical documentation, uh, documentation, and which we treat as a pure product in itself. Uh, then we, I'll talk about why exactly you need an internal product website when you are just uh, your customers are your internal customers, uh, and still you still you need a product website. Why do you need a micro website? We'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about the entire process we went through on terms like having nothing to having this like you know proper proper product website. We'll talk about the process, and then at the end we'll cover like what exactly was the impact of this whole whole exercise. Um, so let's start. So uh, this is this is how the entire like you know landscape at, at the data engineering looks like at Gojek. Uh, we have different different OMS apps uh, which produce data. Um, from, from different different streams and that goes to a fronting stream fronting architecture that goes to main streams which are like a lot of Kafka clusters uh, then we have consumers people who consume this data and then on one side we have aggregation where a lot of like you know all this raw data gets aggregated and that then and there are teams which consumes that data as well then we have certain parts where data visualization happens uh, where we take this aggregated data and we visualize and give it to like you know our users then there is warehousing, then there is infrastructure orchestration, then there is a monitoring piece com uh, component, then there is a load testing component, and then there are like, you know, auto healing components. So this, this all is um, how the data engineering landscape looks like. And out of this whole landscape, we have like, you know, um, more than 18, 18, 19 teams, internal teams working on different, different things. And all these teams, uh, data engineering is cross cutting and all these teams utilizes uh, products we built for them. Um, so for data engineering, the approach we follow is that we are a small team, somewhere around I think 10, 10, 10 people team, uh, and we build products for all these teams. And then the approach we follow is uh, like one thing we definitely focus on is scale. So the scale at which we grow is not linear because even the number of products and even the business itself has grown to like you know from one product to eighteen in the last three four years, and so is the scale of the data, and so is the complexity, and so is the number of the users within within the organization. Uh, and second is automation. Um, so as soon as the product grows, we also grow into international markets. And when you grow into international markets, you need to set up the whole infrastructure for a different country. And when you want to set up the whole infrastructure for a different country, you want to communicate the same thing for, for all these different teams as well. So now, as a team of 10 engineers, if you want to do focus on different products as well as their scaling, as well as scaling to international markets, you want to make sure that the entire process is automated and no manual intervention is required. So a lot of what we do, we heavily focus on that whatever we do, whatever products we build, whatever the process of setting up the infrastructure is, the entire thing is automated. Uh, and third is product mindset. So data engineering itself right now is like not, not there is a no data engineering product outside Gojek which we offer to the end customers, right? So data engineering is an internal team which caters to different, different teams within the Gojek. But we still like operate with a proper product mindset, we, where we consider ourselves as a like complete B two B, you know, product company within Gojek, and we operate in the same fashion. We operate in the same fashion is that we do not 
asks for like you know like let's say for example access or in terms of how do you provide documentation or how do you provide what what particular products you are building so we we treat ourselves like a pure b2b b2 company and we follow the entire cycle like even starting from building products collecting requirements sales even going to talk to people showcasing our products like the whole process which you see for any enterprise company happens within the, within the company um so all these 10 engineers they are just like not just developers but they focus entirely on the full full product cycle so let's talk about like the problems we were facing when 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 we were at the point where we did not have this this you know technical documentation as a product uh the biggest thing was that since we were operating as a b2b and we are operating as a complete separate team communication becomes hard like what exactly we are working on a uh, lot of people most of the people at at the floor do not understand what exactly data engineering team is working on and what will be the next next in line up what next product they are going to release um then you deploy infrastructure and products for different these different teams then a lot of support records request starts to come uh and that starts to consume our core development time and given the size of the team then if you are spending a lot of time into uh, making sure that you know that you have the support request uh, caters to then that consumes a lot of our development time and we are not we are not progressing fast on on, on the features track um so a lot of support support requests are coming at that time and the last thing is that it becomes okay what what, what when we are building as an internal product team right it it's very important that we communicate that if like whatever you guys are problems you guys are solving you are solving certain problems and whatever you need in terms of data in terms of consumption whatever you need our product is the final solution you are looking for and you need to communicate that very clearly and this without any proper proper channel to do that this was getting really hard and i think this is this was one of the worst so we have i think uh, in data engineering we have more than like uh, internal products which data engineering offers to different different teams it's somewhere around 15 20 like smaller big products uh but like some teams are using certain product like let's say bi is using certain products and the developers are using separate products uh data producers using separate data consumers using separate product uh for these particular channels what happens is that data engineering became equivalent to one particular product so let's say firehose is our one particular product right for consumption so for certain people data engineering is all about oh that the team that built firehose or let's say there is another product daggers which is mostly caters to bi folks so for them oh the data engineering team oh the the, the dagger team so the landscape was like that so the entire team became actually equivalent of one particular product team and that was the problem we wanted to solve because if that happens then these these teams are not looking at the other products we are offering and they are not they are not able to like you know get the full capability out of it or whatever whatever they they can use um so this was this was the, i think the biggest problem um then this is this is the word the end product looks like uh, in in our terms um, i think the fonts is not readable uh but this is the this is the product website look like which we call chronicle and this is a micro site we have built and if you have looked at the like you know the different different products outside for example hashicorps like you know products and you look at the documentation these are large scale open product uh, projects which they offer to the entire like you know the entire ecosystem and they build very clearly build very you know very good documentation around how do you you go about using it why do you use it and everything um but then we'll talk about like th that makes sense for them because the product is global and ecosystem is global and people don't know anything and they need to communicate that understanding but how do, exactly does that fit into an internal organization right um so so we followed actually kind of the same same cycle in that in that front and uh, this is how then uh, the end product look like where we talk about what data engineering team is doing what different scenarios we cater to what different particular products we offer and the whole cycle uh these oh, okay uh these like uh, then we talk about like you know from product point of view from developers point of view as well like what all features developers can use there are like you know complete knowledge resource websites and everything everything was there videos from content even documentation even like everything even code samples like starting from just pure why to use it to how to use it to everything um okay um uh, let's move on to process um uh, so the whole cycle for us was i think two weeks when when, when we had internal wiki which was more like uh, like a gitlab pages or things like that uh, 
but that's that's where we started at something was there with like small small pieces uh but then then we started the process and the first thing that that that's there is that how do you go about research and planning like this this was a product us and we were treating it as a com- complete complete product nothing more than that it's not a not a, not a just a tech documentation it's not just a readme file it it was a full product for us a product which will communicate what exactly we are doing there uh so in planning what we did is that um as i mentioned there are different different categories of the teams right uh, there is bi folks there are um there are leadership there are people who are into market section there are people who are into like pure development who are who are the consumers of this data so first we worked on like designing personas around it who are these different kind of people and what kind of products they are using so you start by mapping different different products into different different personas and uh, we heavily use narratives to do that uh, within the within the team Uh, which i'll talk about in a in a while uh, but then we then we went about this whole process taking like different different set of users taking different different set of our products we are offering and then map, doing a mapping of which all particular these users are using which products and then we set down to exercise of if if we ideally we want them to use these products as well what is that particular mapping so categorizing everything and then going about that and talking to people so communication was the biggest into when we started about research and the planning of this phase uh just just ideally in a nutshell figuring out what exactly users want and what is the next thing they can utilize uh the next was preparing content uh so what we did is that we for two days uh we stopped the entire entire development we were not doing any development at all and the entire team actually sat down because since it was an entire backlog right we did not have any anything concrete at that particular point uh so we sat down and we like you know listed down everything we have every product we have offer and everything and then went about like you know designing the entire content of that so in the screenshot what you look, look like is that where we are mapping up the entire entire list of the things so and in the entire list there are streams so streams are our kafka clusters and these kafka clusters hold data and in that data there are main stream there is log stream there is kong stream there is tag stream there are different different kind of clusters which hold different different kind of data now anyone wants to look as soon as i told you this right there are streams and which hold data the next question will be okay what kind of data who is publishing who is producing who is consuming what use cases are there what case studies are there who has solved what problems what kind of problems i can solve all these things came into your mind right um so these are the questions which we all gathered into the into the content design strategy and we put down we put together all these answers for all these streams all these aggregation products and everything so for example there is a dedicated page for for the for the mainstream um so if you let's say if you visit products then we talk about like all these streams are listed here mainstream app stream aggregation products are listed experience products are listed uh products around warehousing products around uh data infrastructure So if we go to one of the stream, uh, this list down like all the overview, application topics it's listing, publishing, consumption, entire architecture of it, uh, where exactly you can monitor that particular stream, what are the case studies of it, so whole, all all this entire thing is listed here. What is the scale of the data here? Seven days of retention, you get on the mirror, you get three months of data retention. How many events are publishing there? Who are consuming? How many topics? How much data is is there in there in, in that particular stream? so and this is for just one thing right uh, we list we we prepared this entire content for everything every data every piece of data we were offering uh, even after doing that this entire cycle since this landscape is so huge that there are so, still there are a lot of sections which are not like documented but we tried our best into making sure that the entire thing is documented uh, then uh, that's after research is done we have the content ready and the content content is actually pretty extensive right uh, then how do we how do we go about designing it how do how do we want to communicate it um so if you look at the like you know as a as a term like data engineering team itself uh, you will hardly hardly correlate design with a data engineering team uh, if you talk about data engineering team what comes to your mind is that okay there are the people who are like pure nerds or pure developers and they focus more purely on the code right and you will ha- design will be the last thing that you will you will look into uh but it's not the case for us we actually focus a lot on the design and since like even for me let's say let's you know my background has been into design 
so design we, we, we like everything we build we make sure that you know it's well designed not from the even from the development point of view even from the representation point of view so even for this particular product we wanted to make sure that it looks good and people whoever is looking into it actually it feels good and looks good consumption has to be experience has to be good but yeah we care about the look and feel as well um we care about if you look at like you know a lot of architecture diagrams usually what people do is uh, you, let's say you pick mono draw or you pick any other like you know tool out there and you just pin down boxes and you just just make the entire diagram uh, but we wanted to get away from that as well and we wanted to make that experience also pretty well so when i explain the you know landscape um even that is a that is a part of which the architecture design like uh, components we designed on our own so what we have in the design language is that we have a we have a complete ui kit which specifically focus on the data engineering and what it has is certain components which you can utilize to even design the architecture diagram so let's say for example we have a kafka cluster piece right so there is a component which represents one particular cluster one particular stream uh, we have automation tool uh, let's say we have a firehose as a product there is a full component which lists down firehose as a product but if you want to represent firehose itself then there is a smaller components which you can utilize uh, for this whole thing uh in terms of tooling we just simply built it with the with the sketch and uh, then exported these components as a as a symbols in sketch so all these ui kits are actually symbol symbol in sketch which the entire team uses as centrally um so not like a pure design team or something but we still follow the same guidelines which a pure design system designing team will follow um now that's that's to design architecture diagrams and everything right and as i talked about we follow we 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 believe a lot into narrative design so whenever we come up with a product what we do is directly go out and build a narrative around it with narrative i mean is that if we have to communicate that particular product and that particular communicate has to product communicate with the user uh, how you will go about it some user will ask some certain questions i'll i'll tell certain answers so even for our cli tools let's say for example we build right even for a simple cli tool we build product narratives and uh, not like okay this is the cli this is has to do but there is a complete product narrative around it and then even to distribute our products to different different people uh, we have a comp complete design set of brochures and the kits and the print materials as well which we use when whenever we go for showcases and everything um uh, so yeah so in given in cell so we have this entire library of the ui kit even the narrative design and then the entire design language is there which we utilize to communicate our product to build architecture diagrams and even to build narratives around it and all of this is actually like you know maintained and self utilized by by data engineering team so like these are like some of the components utilized to build the architecture diagrams and this is one example of the of the product narrative so this is this is one of our tool odin which is a infrastructure orchestration tool so any user uh, will just so odin here is saying i'm odin almighty god user will ask what all you can do and it tells okay i can safely create infrastructure for you i can create data clusters i can create viruses i can create consumers i can replicate your entire infrastructure to a different country as well um then people can just simply say okay uh, i want to create new data infrastructure and i want to create it for this particular city and then it can just ask okay how many data clusters do you want do you want different different streams of the data or for this new particular region you just want certain streams uh so this is the narrative we designed before even starting to design the design the service itself how exactly people what will what will be the best narrative user can have with this particular service uh to make sure the experience is good and what we are talking about is a is a backend service which which is rest service api calls um so even to design that api call we take sure we make sure that there is a net narrative around it way before we go into the development or way before we go go into the coding that comes when exactly we are vision, envisioning that particular product um okay in terms of uh, developing chronicle uh, so we wanted it to be so since like lot of this is data intensive right and this data is growing every day there are new streams coming uh, new products coming so we wanted to make sure that this website whatever pro micro website we build can pull data from different different services our metadata services and can always stay updated and we wanted to make sure since we are developers we don't want to spend lot of time after once we have finished like code development we did not want to spend lot of time writing html css and doing all this so we wanted to make sure that whatever bare bones structure we set up and we spend what uh, time into it later we can make sure that you can always fill custom de design layouts into it without without much effort 
and indexing and product categorization happens so fast that you just provide certain tags to it and then and the entire thing falls falls into the place on its own so even even our product manager doesn't have to write any code after we finish the bootstrap and then they can just specify certain tags write certain markdown and it automatically falls into where exactly on the entire microsite it has to go um i can show you the Okay, so if you look at that, this is the boilerplate. Um, so if someone has to add one particular section, all they have to define is this, this metadata. What is this title about, tagline, description, which path it belongs to, which category it belongs to, which position it belongs to, what are the tags and when it's written. And as soon as you define that, it automatically knows on the entire website where it has to fall. Is it Does it belong to developer documentation? Does it belong to product which is more focused on the end user in terms of bi and people who are like non developers and uh, what what i have to do with it and then then just someone just write the simple markdown around it and automatically fills it um the what exactly it helps us in is, is into just making sure that we don't we can continuously do it so that it becomes as as soon as that you as soon as you know as close as to that add, as you add comments in your doc, uh, in your code uh, simply you just write simple markdown here and it automatically goes to the microsite properly um, so uh, after that particular process happened and we are we were ready with the like you know entire microsite uh, what we wanted to do is deliver it to our users and our users are like internal teams uh, so what what we the process we follow and this is not just for for this particular micro website this we follow for any any product we build so we do showcases so we followed the same process for us because for us it was it was no less than a product uh, so we went about doing showcases in showcases we invite certain teams and we told them that okay, this is the product this is what it can do for you uh, you can look through the, all the use cases uh, you don't have to come to data engineering for all your needs and to understand what exactly we offer what exactly like you know what is the landscape of the data inside the gojek um, and then we printed brochures and we did all, all those cycles. We had personal interactions with the user, people as well. Talking to product managers, how do you feel about the entire experience, entire micro website? Uh, does it help you into reaching from point A to point B where you don't know anything about data engineering, what we offer, and you still have, at the end of the day, you still have like, you know, a good understanding of how, how you can go about it. Um, in terms of adoption, so there are like in Bangalore office for Gojek, we have we are around uh, like 300, 300 developers, um, and this is how like you know the active users and uh, weekly active users looks like. So users were like pretty good. People were extensively looking at into it. Uh, we I can't say that we still have reached that entire stage where everyone is using it and this is the single source of the truth and they don't have to come to the data engineering. Uh, but I think still we are still are at a really good position from where exactly we, we were in terms of a lot of people using it and a lot of the requests which were coming earlier are not not coming to us and uh, once you ship something right and then you give it to give it to your users and you feel the same things when when they give you feedback about so these are like some some feedback from like people if they talk, talk about okay this is one of the best documentation like you know within the within the org we have built or within the Different company, if the people have experience working with different companies, they have seen. You will see a lot of good documentation, as I gave example of Hashikov, right, and or or other any large open scale project. You will see really good documentations they build, and uh, but you will hardly like very often. It's not very like you know often that you see this kind of efforts put into building a technical do documentation for an internal product for a team of three hundred engineers internally. Um, that just shows that how, how much how much the team itself is care about the product and how much how much value it can bring in total um few less lessons learned like as as i talked a little about it destination is a myth i won't say we we are in that perfect situation i still won't say that we are close to it i think we are still very far and it's an ongoing process and there are a lot of sections where people still feel like they don't have the entire understanding of where exactly the data is and but i think i think we are very uh, we are a good situation from where exactly we were like before doing this and uh, i think with, with with continuous progress this this is the way to go and i think we can solve most of our problems into giving the entire um, like you know landscape knowledge to people within the org uh, with the, with this microsite itself and um I would say like your documentation whatever you are building right uh, even if you buy a single product from 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 a market 
it always comes with a handy guide. It does not matter how simple that particular product is. Uh, if that documentation is not there, the only thing you will do is you will do a trial and error, right? You will try to figure out what this particular button does. Let's say, for example, even for a washing machine. Uh, since we use it, it's fine. But if it's a new product, you would need that particular documentation to start with. This documentation can come in form of a video. It can come form in, in, a, in terms of picture. It can come in terms of a text, right? But that has to be there. And it's not just a product. It's, it's a part of the entire product experience. Um, so if you, are, if you are building a product, it's even an internal product, even if it's a REST API, right? It's a, it's a product. It's a product to someone. Someone is going to be the user of it. Um, so I would say focus as much as you want. If you focus on the product, focus as much as on the on the documentation itself. Because from my point of view, documentation is extension of your, of your product. It's extension of your entire product experience. Um, next lesson we learned is that communication matter. Does not matter even if you build the entire product website and you communicate it to people. Still, always make sure that you have personal interaction with the people to figure out what exactly what exact problems you are solving. Uh, this happens. This 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 applies to even if you have a very genuine experience delivery or does does not have. But always make sure that the communication is there and communication matter. And in whatever form you do it, you make sure that you do it. Um, and then fourth is that if you look at like you know as different I talked about these open source projects so what they have is a dedicated team usually everything you will see they will have a dedicated team of three four developers working on it three four people who are good at writing pure technical documentation there are three four designers who are involved into it so there is largely a pretty huge team focused on just making sure that it is communicated to the users uh, what I want to bring out is that it's it's good they need it maybe for for serving such a large ecosystem uh, but it's not necessary we were a team of 10 developers doing still the same thing and still maintaining it no designer were involved no extra front end developers were involved no one else was involved and then the entire cycle actually just took us uh, 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 close to two weeks starting from planning to finishing the entire product and even doing showcases in two weeks the entire thing was done and after that it has been a continuous exercise that as as, as you write comments in your code you just write certain uh, markdown lines in the code and the entire thing just keeps on rolling on its own. Um, so you can still deliver, you don't have to specifically focus or you put your, put your mind into that, okay, you need a dedicated team, it's not, it's not, it cannot be done without that. I mean, I would say it's, it's you can be, even a team of two, three developers can deliver the same experience which a dedicated team can do. So developers are good enough for this particular job. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it from my side. Um, but if you have certain questions around any any of the entire thing, I can, I'm, I'll be happy to take. Sure. So code base is changing pretty fast. Yeah. So then, how do you make sure that your documentation is up to the pace? Because that is one problem I have seen. Sure. Um, Okay, let me put together this this microsite I'm talking about. Then the Chronicle I showed. This is not actually your code documentation. Uh, what it is is your product documentation. Yes, if your product features are changing, then you just go and change the change, change the markdown files a little bit. It's as soon as as you are documenting something. Let's say if your API contract is changing, for example, right? You would document it somewhere. So it close to the, exactly the same as that. If your API contract is changing, let's say you have a Postman collection. You will go change the request features there as well. If you're not doing that, you should do it. Uh, but it's for us, it's the same as maintaining that as well. As soon as one contract changes, we change cert uh, certain markdown things and whatever is it's referring to. If there are new features coming, we update that. It's it's part of our agile iteration cycle. From verification, story goes to the production when this is done and it's documented. Thank you, everyone.